Hello, my name is Sandy. Today we will be exploring Roblox. Roblox is a free online game platform and game creation system. It allows users to program games and play games created by other users. Before we get started, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell to enable notifications for our channel by clicking the logo during the video. Also, leave us a comment or check out our related videos by clicking the pop up cards in the upper right corner. Here's how to get started with Roblox. Roblox is more than an online game. It's an educational tool where the opportunities for digital creativity are endless. You could even explore their website created just for the classroom. To access the site, go to education.roblox.com. This is where you will discover resources, including lesson ideas, tutorials, and games that have been designed just for the classroom. There is even a list of educators who specialize in teaching through Roblox. As you can see, this list is global. To start using Roblox as a player, you first need to sign up for an account, and this is totally free. You could play games on Roblox through a variety of devices, such as Mac, PC, tablets, iOS, Android, Xbox Live, and even on Chromebook. In order to build games on Roblox, you ha have to download Studio, which I will talk about later. Roblox is ideal for students of all ages, and participants under 13 do have safety limitations when they sign up. If you locate the username on the top menu, mine shows 13 plus. If I was signing up as a student who is younger than 13, it would have a different icon indicating that I am under 13. And there are areas of Roblox that will not be available to me if I was. Once you sign up for your free account, you'll land on your profile page. And if for some reason you don't, all you have to do is go down to this menu, pull down to profile, and then it will bring you there. Here's where you'll find um, friends, followers, who, who are you following? You could write a little bit about yourself. And then it sort of tells you everything that you're wearing currently. And it just comes by default. Everybody sort of looks different. If you would like to change what your avatar looks like, you click on avatar shop. And that's on the top menu. And then when you click on view all items, this will come down and it will say filters. And you go all the way down to where it says price. And instead of any price, you're just going to click the second selection and then type in zero, zero. And hit go. And then here are all the free options that you could download in your own personal collection. And this is where your students can personalize their avatars. Once you have personalized your avatar, you could jump right in to start playing. I recommend you start off by searching for an obby. This is short for obstacle course, and it is just that. Later in the video, I will demonstrate some basic tools in Studio so that you will be able to start building your own obby game. When you search for obbies, you'll actually start putting it right here in the search bar and I actually um, spelled it with an I. I think it's spelled with a Y. But I actually typed in easy afterwards, so it sort of picks up like some keywords, and then you can tell how many people have voted on it and how many active players. So I'm going to choose this mega easy obby. When you click on the game you want to play, and in this case it's the mega easy obby, 700 stages, here you'll find the description, you'll have a little bit about it, and then it will actually allow you to have a private server. Now the private server, if you want to do that with your students, costs a little extra money. So that's something you would have to think about. But you would just hit the play button. You could also favor it, follow it, and you could vote on it here. But when you hit the play button, it actually begins the game. Once you get into your game, you will need to use the keyboard to navigate your character. So the D will turn the avatar one way. The A will turn it the other way. The W walks one way, and the S walks a different way. Also, you need to know that your space bar is your jump. Another thing you need to know is that if you are using a mouse, that's going to be the best option to navigate through these games because the scroll on your mouse gives you a different viewpoint. And the right click on your mouse gives you yet another viewpoint. So 
you could see the whole game. If you do something wrong, like run into something, you technically fall apart. So once you get through one stage, it gives you some progress. Another thing you could do is if you actually run into things, you fall apart or you could actually fall off the entire platform. That's me falling apart and that's me falling off the platform. <laughs> My head fell off. Now that you've experienced a little bit of being a player of the game, let me show you a few little tips on how to start creating. What you're gonna do is you're gonna go to the create on your menu and then you'll come to this area here. When you hit start creating, it's going to check and see if you have Roblox. And if you have Roblox, which I already do, it will actually open up the program. When Roblox first launches, you'll see this uh, page here. This page will show you your templates and it will also allow you to choose from different themes and some different gameplay themes. So when you go to all templates, we're gonna start with the classic base plate. Once you open Roblox Studio, you should see this toolbox. This is where you get items to use. You'll see Explorer. This is where you're going to actually be able to select parts of your buildings and um, edit them. And then you'll see properties. So each thing you select, you'll the properties will expand below that. You will also be using these four tools, select, move, scale, and rotate, along with using this part option to where you could bring in some different shapes. And of course, there's a lot more to learn, but this is just a beginner's video. As you learn the basics, you could go on to do some more intricate things. So one thing I want you to do is resize your base plate. So you're gonna go over here to workspace and make sure it's expanded, and you're gonna click on base plate, and they Properties will expand, and you're gonna go down to find where it says size. You might have to expand size. You're going to click on the first number X and make that 20, make the Y two, and make the Z 20. What this does is it makes it a much more reasonable size, and don't forget if it kind of disappears, use your scroll wheel and use your right click. And you could also use this um, tool right here. This actually shows different um, parts of your picture, it kind of helps you scroll around. So now that you know how to change colors and change surface textures, we're going to create this as a spawn area where when you first enter a game, the avatar lands on it. In order to do that, go to where it says model and then click on spawn. And what that does is it brings the spawn tool right to your base plate. You're gonna move it around, you're gonna center it. Bring it up a little bit. And there you have it. So this is going to be where the avatar lands. And if you want to see how this works, you're gonna go back to home and you're gonna just hit play. And then it's going to show you my avatar landing right on the spawn plate. So in order to make your obstacle course a little more interesting, you might wanna add some things to it. Like for example, over here are a bunch of different objects that people have made and they're free to use. So you literally can take, drag and drop them. Now this is very large. I'm gonna take that one out. It's very large, let's find another one. coming in. There it is. Oh, I put a couple in. So here's my here's my little art pieces and I can make them smaller. I can move them to where I want to move them. Bring them closer to where we need to be. It's actually really really far be behind it. So now it's kind of like on my on my art piece. <laughs> so um, you kind of like think about there, oh, here's my other ones that I put in here. And you could delete them by just right clicking and delete.
All right. So you can add other things into your obstacle course. And the other thing, and it's kind of cool because it actually makes shadows and everything like that. And, and, the, and those might even be interactive. I haven't even tried that yet. But in order to make the obstacle course for your piece is you're going to go in and you're going to, let's do the anchor on this little guy here. We'll give him an anchor so he'll stay there. And then we're going to go and put a part in here. And we're going to make a block. And we want the block to be... Let's bring them out here to, to be exactly right next to it. We'll make it go a little bit lower, maybe. And then you could also change the scale of it by doing that. And if you want to have a better idea of what it looks like, you can always use your right click, kind of look at it from above. So when you click it, you have to anchor it or it will not show up. Now I'm going to hit play. And then here I have it. It's here with my first step. You use your W, use your space bar, and I jumped right on top of my first, first step. I'm right barely on it, but I'm on it. So that's basically the, the basics of how all this works. And once you have finished making your game, you could actually publish it, you could share it with others, you can make a private, and um, have some fun with it. Thanks for watching an episode of our Ori County Schools teacher vlog series. Make sure to like, follow, and subscribe to all of our Dear Dis social media pages.